skin that smoke wagon and see what happens. How's that for a slice of fried gold? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't know how this machine worked. It seems to run on some form of electricity. And it was wrong. It was a bad call, Ripley. It was a bad call. Bad call. Right. Some are good for fighting, others for dying. It's just two movies. Stretching. I'm stretching. Oh, you're stretching. I'm stretching. All I'm right. clapped out. I'm, mm. I'm good to go. I'm feeling feeling fresh. Welcome back to another episode of It's Just Two Movies. My name is Daniel King. With me today up in the studio is my motherfucking main man, Jackson. Jackson's in the house. Uh, it's Once good, more. Good to see you again, bro. Man, I love being here. Yeah, it's been a little bit. It's fun. We're having a good time. We, we decided. We've been talking we decided, forever. We have. So what, <laughs> when, when I text you about this, like Monday or Tuesday, I was like, you want to do the show? Yeah. Uh, and I've been getting pumped about it. Non stop. <laughs> I'm gonna get a little I'm, we're gonna get a little sloppy tonight. We got a three day weekend. Sloppy is three day a... weekend, fucking labor day. This is for you. If you're out there and you're working and you have a job, fucking take it easy, baby. Take it easy. Unless you we're work gonna at a place where you work on Labor Day, in which case that fucking sucks, man. I feel for And you. we got the perfect movie for you. Yeah, we do have perfect movies for you. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking <laughs> office space. <laughs> And then we're going to watch Superman 3. Superman 3. So if the, this is your first time tuning into the show, what we do is we watch a good, what, what what at least one of us thinks is a good movie. Uh, and then we try to find something in common as far as like bad movie or trash cinema goes. And there is a connection. There's there, a connection there's between Office Space and Easy connection. When you're watching Superman Office 3. Space, they even point it out for you. And they're like, this is the exact plot from Superman 3. <laughs> So that's why we're going to watch Superman 3, because it is revered as one of the worst Superman films. I've never seen it, so... I love Superman 1 and 2. I don't... It's... Those movies are so old, I've never actually watched them. So... They're pretty fucking good. My new cinema for Superman is what I have currently. Henry Cavill. Yeah. That's your, that's your new I Superman? Mean, I'm, I'm familiar he's, he's with good. the other He ones. looks good as Superman. He's a good he cast. He looks like Superman. He does look it's like, like Superman. Cast Even the like, perfect person. When I watch The Witcher, yeah. I'm like, it's a good way to get <laughs> Superman to play The Witcher. <laughs> right? Uh, so, anyway, I get, let's, let's, go ahead and, let's go ahead and fucking jump in. Jumping in. Office oh, what are we jumping into now? Oh, uh, box office stuff. I haven't looked looked at any of that up. I, I feel like no, I got you, Doug. <laughs> office Space is a 1999 comedy slash dark comedy. Hour 29 minute runtime, 7.7 7 out of 10 on IMDb, 80 percent on Rotten Tomatoes, and 68 percent on Metacritic. Uh, release date: This was February 19th, 1999. So this is like a Valentine's 99. Day. Uh, screenplay and director: Mike Judge. Uh, Comedy, comedy pioneer, uh, yeah. Uh, box office was twelve point two million. Budget was ten million. So this just squeaked this by squeak- profitably. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Probably didn't. I don't recall. I mean, like, all right, nineteen ninety nine. Nineteen ninety nine. I was like, I don't know, like fifteen. I would have known if this was on in the theater near me. Uh, fifteen, you would have. Yeah, I, I would have, at, at my age at that time, I would have known this was playing How, in a theater near me. However, listen, to a 15-year-old, this is not relatable. So you're like, what the fuck am I watching there? I ain't watching that. I ain't, I ain't driving to watch that. That's all, that, <laughs> that is also very true. This is a, uh, it's like a cult film. If you listen to the show, you probably have seen this because we do a lot of like cult films. But... All right, I, I like this movie. I wouldn't necessarily say it's near and dear to my heart. I have probably seen it a dozen times. But before I watched it yesterday, I was thinking about it, and I had not seen this movie for almost 13 years. It had been a long while since I had actually sat down and watched the actual movie. Oh I've seen God. clips and memes. It's a and banger. Like The clips and memes, like, thank you you know the movie like which mm-hmm. you do like if you've seen it once yeah there's little l- there's little bits you might have forgot about though but i'm just like you i hadn't seen the movie in a long time I actually watched it from front to back yeah i'm like holy shit this movie's great yeah <laughs> it, it really it really is for for the sake of posterity what would you say this movie's about uh this movie is about i mean it holds true With, to- without ruining it just briefly in two or three sentences. I don't think there's, there's much to ruin. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's about a guy, a normal a normal human being living in 20, 20th century, 21st century America. 1998. 
98. Came out in 99. Okay. 20th Takes century. place in 98. 20th century America. I don't I don't know why I remember that <laughs> detail, but I do. All right. So he's living in corporate America. That's what it is. He's living in corporate America mm-hmm. and, you know, he hates his job. He hates yeah. his job so much that he... Uh, he's that- a... He's a software guy for a place that's like working on issues with banks for the Y two K bug, which the Y2K was never a thing. Bug, which that used to be a thing. I remember that. It used to be like holy shit. I remember Everybody being... thought the world was going to end. They'd plug plug all these things in. Oh my in. god! I got so excited about it going back, going back to like the fucking bronze I age. I honestly forgot, like in this movie, like that they brought it up as the rounding thing. It's like yeah, like into the Y two K like plug. Oh, hell yeah. And I was like, oh, that used to be like, yeah, the world's going to end, Y2K. Yeah. Like, uh, the bank, the computers can't handle it. <laughs> Fucking madness, man. <laughs> computers can't handle okay, hold on. zero, zero. Let me go back. Let me go back. All right. This movie is about a guy in corporate America. Corporate mm-hmm. today, honestly. It is. It holds true to today. Uh, that he hates his job. Do you, work I mean, in a, do you work in a cubicle? Do you feel unmotivated because no matter how hard you work, you take home the same pay? Uh, Are you talking to me? <laughs> I'm talking to anybody who's listening, man. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, this guy's, you know, he hates his job and he's just going, he's doing the day-to-day thing to get a paycheck, get money, yeah. to live into a society that, you know, whatever it is. You know, you have to earn a paycheck to pay your bills, to pay all this non, you know, all this stuff. Yeah. Middle of the movie, he gets switched to where he doesn't give a shit. Nope. Uh, our our main protagonist in the movie doesn't give a shit at all no. and lives life how everybody should live life. I can't do that, but. <laughs> yeah, same. Uh, me neither. <laughs> But, uh, we, me but he goes in that route. He's like, all right, what if money and none of this shit actually mattered? Which it doesn't in the grand scheme of thing. If you're put on this earth for whatever, money is just a construct of things. Right. If you don't like, care about those things, you don't care about that money. You just, you know what you have to do is you have to be aware of the elements. You got to stay hydrated. You got to get fed. And you gotta, you gotta have community. You gotta That's have it. it. You gotta have those four things. But to be plugged into all that, you gotta do all this other bullshit for modern day society. So he's just like, fuck it. And that's the rest of the movie. That's pretty much it. That's more than two or three sentences, but it'll work. Mm. Uh, <laughs> so, I was always two or three. So Shit. let's go, let's go ahead and, like um, I, I feel comfortable rating this up top. I feel like yeah. most of our audience has probably seen Office Space at some point in time. It was my pick. If you never have, or if you're like, I'm a little fuzzy on Office Space, actually, it is worth a watch. Uh, it's on Hulu right now. Hulu, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I streamed it on Hulu. So, uh, it was great. I loved it. Yeah. Uh, it brought me back. It brought me back, and then it put me back into my spot of today. I'm like, shit. Man, same. A little bit. It kind of speaks <laughs> to like, you. It's like, fuck you, movie. So, a uh, little bit more about <laughs> Office Space. This stars Ron Livingston, Mike Judge, Gary Cole, Stephen Root, Jennifer Aniston, David Herman, Ajay Nadu, Ajay Nadu, Der- uh, D- Diedrich, <laughs> Diedrich Bader, John C. McGinley, Alexandra Wentworth, uh, Richard Riley, Paul Wilson, Todd Duffy, Greg Pitts, uh, Joe Bays. Jesus Christ. There's a fucking, (laughs) there's a million people in this, including Orlando Jones. So, yeah. Is our main protagonist, like, is he a... That's Ron Livingston. Is he a main person in any other movie? Well, he plays Peter Gibbons in this. That's all I fucking know. And Peter <laughs> Peter works at a works at a he works in a fucking cubicle. He like you said, doing doing bank stuff. It's boring and he fucking hates it. Yeah, he works at Inatech. Yeah. He okay. shows up late every day. Mid mid corporate level job. So what's the the catalyst was like his girlfriend wants him to go see uh like a work hypnotherapist? Yeah. So do you want to get there? You want to get to that point? Where we want, where we want, man. Uh, we, we got time. Uh, he, he hates his fucking job. You clearly open up and you okay. see him hating his job for a day. So well, let me start. I kind of want to start from the beginning because the beginning for me is one of my most. It's one of the best opening scenes for me. Okay. Period. <laughs> All right. Let's break it down for me, baby. What you got? So you're okay. So you're in corporate America. You're fucking. 
to put you in the space of office space, you got to kind of be put into the zone of what does this feel like? Well, you're in a traffic jam to start the morning. Oh yeah, yeah. No, that's a that's, fucking traffic jam. That's absolutely true. Cause that's, uh, that that shit's pretty rough. Our, our protagonist Peter, he one of his things he he got he's like, all right, I got to get to work. I can't be late. What yada yada. And he switch he switches he switches lanes, and uh, as soon as he switches lanes, you can't switch lanes. I mean, that's an unspoken rule. You can't switch lanes and expect to be faster in this other lane. The, that's not how traffic jams work. Yeah, no, that's true. Because then your lane that you were just in... I got good at that shit, man. I used to I used to fucking... <laughs> you know, I, I lived in town here and I worked up in the loo. And buddy... That's a thing. Yeah. Like, you're like, right, I get to the fucking north side in 90 minutes. I can jump over to this lane and be faster. And then just that lane just slows down. You're like, you're, you're an asshole lane. Right. And then your lane that you just jumped out of starts going. It's like... Mm-hmm. I don't know. I love that aspect of it because I'm like, I live that shit. <laughs> I'm like, right. that's me. Oh like, yeah, this sucks. I I hate. Yeah, yeah. I used heavy to do the, traffic. I used man. to do the. I used to do the commute up to uh, up to St. Louis every day from down here from uh, from where we're at in beautiful St. Francis County, Missouri. It's beautiful out right now. Anyway, it's, it's, summer's it's summer's starting right to now. break, so it's, it's feeling I'll, nice out. This temperature is perfect. Yeah, it really is. Um, so yeah, uh, he he gets hypnotized eventually. Well, like, well, you can fill in the gaps if you if you're so, missing a thing. So on on the uh, on the front scene, um, you get a, a picture of your kind of three primary people, four yeah. primary people. Um, Peter driving around in in the traffic jam, and then you have uh, Michael. And his <laughs> name his name is Michael Bolton. He, which is great, oh, man. which is great. But then, like the the black street vendor guy walks the, by, and he's like, he's, well, he's got, not, he's what, asking for change or something. There. No, he's not asking for change. He's selling something. He's got like, he's got like, I don't know. He's got something. He's selling some shit. So, so I got and Michael. He, though. he like leans over and locks his door <laughs> real nonchalant, <laughs> nonchalant. Before, like, he is wrapping his heart's content. Like, like he is going at it. So, hon, he he's rapping as hard as he can go, like screaming at the top of his lungs in oh, his own yeah. car, like we all do. Who doesn't do it's that? It's some biggie, if, like, if I'm not mistaken. I think he, I think he's uh, bumping be, some biggie, like Tupac, one of those. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but he is rapping to his heart's content, and then he's like, "All right, this uh, black vendor guy is walking up the the street mm-hmm. and uh, wants to sell me something or ask me for something and." He slowly rolls, he locks his door, he rolls up his window, oh, yeah. he stops singing, he turns down the music. And then he turns it back up, he's like, yeah, motherfucker, <laughs> as soon as the guy walks away. He's like, yeah, he, and he, like, as soon as the other guy walks away, he's like, he turns it back up, s- starts rapping, uh, you know, I got the pistol. <laughs> I don't know, I can't rap, but. Yeah, uh, it was it was great, though. There's a lot of, um, you know, one of my notes here, actually, like, I love the rap soundtrack that's, like, played up gangster shit in this, and the, like, the, some of the, you wouldn't say there's violence in this movie, but there is a little, like, hand-fisted <laughs> violence. There's a, there's violence against software, <laughs> hardware. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So, so Peter, like, his old lady is, like, cheating on him. He doesn't know that, but he's like, I get the feeling she's cheating on me. And all of his friends are like, yeah, I get that feeling too. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, so I, she talks him into going to a work hypnotherapist and the guy's like putting him under, he's putting him under and he's like, you're going until I snap my fingers and count down to one. You'll be as relaxed as you possibly can. And one, uh, uh, two, deeper and deeper. And he's like, you see him, he's like getting sweaty and like gripping his hands. And he's having a fucking him. heart attack. <laughs> And the guy gets down to one, and then he has a heart attack and dies. So Peter is stuck in this state of hypnosis is the catalyst that makes him, like, he's relaxed. He's is not he... worried about his job. He's just worried about, like, having a good time. And, you know, he's still himself, but he's not worried about employment at all. He's not worried about anything. Like, he goes to this hypnotherapist because his girlfriend or whatever was like, hey, you need to go. He's like, and his first thing he asked the hypnotherapist was like, hey, can you just like make me feel like I went to work, but I actually played golf all day and then come home? Yeah, I come home and I feel like I got done playing <laughs> like, golf. I don't think I can do that, dude. Right. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I can't help you. The funniest thing about that, he goes, well, not the funniest, but oh my, it's kind of like, it, it tugs at your heart. He's like, 
you know, I was telling the therapist, he's like, he goes, yeah. you know, every day you see me is the worst day of my life. Like yeah. every day is like every exponentially day is a like, little bit worse, worse than the day before. It, and he's because like, I'm <laughs> still doing it. Like, that's the thing like, about it that grinds down at you. And who can't relate to that? Like, who's not gone to work and been like, again, 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 again. There we yeah, go. Like, it's like, you got to be like Captain America to have a job in today's fucking employment market. I can do this all day. You get, but for how many days? How many days? How many can days you do is it? the question. All of, us, all of us can do it all day, but for how long? Especially if you absolutely hate everything that is going on around you. Like the opening scene, like, okay, you, you go from the traffic jam. Oh my God, he hates the lady that like works next to him. She's like, and he gets thank it, you for calling us again. <laughs> Just a moment. Yeah, he gets to the office and he gets shocked by the door. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like static like shock he, uh, by the doorknob shock. every day. And then this bitch fucking starts, like, how many accounts payable is there? She says the same damn thing, like, 50 times. They're all in this cubicle. Like, if you if you don't work in an office, there's a, a cubicle is six feet high, uh, yeah. five and eight, five, five yeah. eight, something yeah. like that. Where you can kind of look over and see what's going on in somebody mm -hmm. else's cubicle. And there's, you have your own little spot, but. Yeah. Uh, you have like a, like a trifecta desk. But you have an, a way out, and then you have like like four or five or four people next, around you. Yeah. That are doing their own thing. And one of the people that are around him is this loud ass chick that is just. Welcome to accounts payable. Or I don't know what she. I don't. I can't remember. But she says it in the most annoying possible way you could say. Oh yeah. Whatever she's saying. Oh yeah. And he has to listen to that every single day. All day, while the phone just like, rings off the fucking hook. That puts you in his mind, his space, like fucking shit. Yep. His two Again. friends. His two friends are a uh, Indian guy that nobody can pronounce his name. <laughs> Amir. Indian guy. Indian and, guy. Uh, and Michael Bolton. Like, those are his two best work friends. Yeah, so Michael Bolton's the guy that's singing rap all day, and he hates that his name is Michael Bolton. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he sure does. Um, it's a, uh, his other friend is his neighbor next door that lives at home, and that's uh, played by Diedrich Bader. Yeah, Lawrence. Lawrence is one of my favorite characters. My, probably my second favorite character in the movie. He tells it like I it think, is. I think maybe John C. McGinley might be one of my favorite casts in this. That he's one of the Bobs, the like thinner of the, the two Bobs. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he he's he plays a perfect Bob. Do you think he's great? I don't know why scrubs? he's. I don't know why he's, he's, he's not scrubs, more right? shit. He's so awkward that he's charming. He he's on uh, Scrubs. Yeah, he's on Scrubs. He's, he's, he's in lots dick. of shit. Yeah. <laughs> so like his yeah he. He he makes that character exactly what you want it to be. The mm -hmm. guy that's laying off oh, yeah. people. So if we were to take you to the through the movie, so Peter he gets to his job. He he hates what he's doing, and he tells his his boys his his guys that he works with. He's like, hey, I I need to take a break because it's been an hour, and I'm listening to this chick. I'm listening to this other nonsense. Yeah, let's go to lunch. My boss, I have three bosses calling about a TPS report. Uh, I need to go out of my cubicle and we're going to go to Chotsky's. <laughs> right, where he sees Jennifer Aniston and he's like, he's got a huge crush on Jennifer Aniston. Can't talk to her. Chotsky's is like, um, you ever been to a... Uh, like a Friday's. Yeah, it's like a TGI Fridays kind of thing. It's uh, or Chili's or something. It's that. It's that. yeah. It's it's that thing. Uh, that, even, not my not my jam, by the way. Not down with the the Applebee's and the TGI Fridays. I know because I'm a dad. I'm like supposed to be <laughs> down with it, but I'm not. We we make way better food here at the house, and also don't have to be patronized. I mean, I, just, <laughs> I, mean, I can't argue against that. Um, but if I don't want to like fix shit. And I want to go have something nice. 
decent, like middle class. I don't want to pay for shit. Yeah, that's it. And you can get a beer. That's the best. That's part. where you that's go. That's the best part. You get, yeah, you get some you, alcohol you with it. Go, you can go and it's like, get fuck a beer. Fuck my family. I'm gonna drink some beer, y'all. Can <laughs> man, I used to go in this when I lived up in the when I lived up in the Lou. I'm probably gonna leave this in, but when I lived up in the Lou, I used to go down the block to a fucking like dive Mexican joint called Chihuahuas. Chihuahuas. Oh man, I tell you what, they couldn't make food for shit, but. <laughs> Their drinks were just out of this world. Uh, they were real good. Whoever was behind the bar, it's man. You got to convince the rest of the family. It's good. It's good. I'm, man, I'm a I, dream. Let me tell you this. The only thing I ever got there was the nachos because I looked at everyone else's food and was like, nah, dog. No. Nah. No, it's going to be a hard pass. Can I get nachos? It's like the remember, thing you can't fuck up. You remember Del Taco? Del Taco. Yeah, I bet it Del Taco. Was Del there Taco. one around here? Yeah, in St. Louis. Oh. Dude. I've been to Del Taco in St. Louis. I don't know if it's a thing anymore, but Del Taco is shit. F- first great. time I ever went to Del Taco, I think I was in. I remember going out of my way to go to Del Taco. I was like, Taco Bell, fuck you. Del yeah, Taco. I, th- I think I was That's in the Mexican. I think I was is. in Ohio the first time I ever went to a Del Taco. Anyway, it was delicious. It was better than fucking it's way Taco be- Bell shit. It box. was like an actual taco. By the way, Taco Bell, if you want me to endorse your tacos, it's just two movies at gmail dot com. Yeah, we can uh, uh or add us just that. to movies on 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 the gram or the, or the <laughs> tweets. I only check the twitters like twice a week because nobody tweets at a tweets our Twitter. Twitter hasn't done shit or so. <laughs> I'm not on Twitter. Anyway, we're we're hun. okay. Um, hun. Off of space. L- let me let me jump ahead. We're we're running about halfway on time and we haven't really we haven't really said anything. No, we're through the intro. So. He gets hypnotized. He goes back to work, and all of a sudden, he's like, I don't want to go to work. So he just doesn't go. And they're like, are you going to quit? And he's like, no, I'm not going to quit. And then they're like, well, so what if you get fired? He's like, yeah, I might get fired. He's like, but I'm not going to go. So he just doesn't go, or he just goes when he feels like it. Yeah. But he goes and like plays Tetris, and he guts a fish at his desk. And... <laughs> he literally guts a yeah, fish he at goes, his desk. Yeah, he goes on a fishing trip, and then he takes his fish to work and guts it there because he doesn't want to dick with the trash or so, whatever. It's like, so Peter turns into your ideal day of not giving a fuck. Yeah, if you could give zero fucks tomorrow when you are, or today, because you're probably listening to this on a Monday. It's Friday night right now, so we're feeling pretty loosey-goosey. But Monday morning is a different, it's a a whole different animal. It's like, how would you feel if you didn't have to give a single fuck? Like, Peter, like, he goes in, he's like, I'm just here to pick up yeah, my his, it, my address book. Yeah, I can't so, I can't forget the name. <laughs> yeah, so the company that he works for, Inatech, uh, they, they've hired like headhunters essentially to come in and assess whose jobs are important, the whose Bobs. jobs are not. So they got these two guys named Bob. Uh, so they call them the Bobs. The Bobs. It's a bit. It's a big theme too. Like it's like everybody's like worried. Like all right, they're gonna lay people off. They have done this at another company. Oh yeah. Um, it's an efficiency thing where they uh see what you're actually doing and what you actually mean to the company yeah and some of these people mean absolutely nothing to the company mm-hmm. uh the guy that's worried the most <laughs> it's the diabetes guy <laughs> it's Dude, the diabetes guy he has a useless fucking job i see this all the fucking time in my own job i'm like what do you actually do? Like that's a question they ask this guy. What's right. his Tom? Let's say I don't know. I think it's Tom. But let's call him Tom. I don't know if I'm right. Uh, but they ask him. So Tom, what what would you say you do here? And he is uh uh like he's just stuttering. Yeah. Because they ask him about um uh, uh <laughs> it's like so you so you grab customer information and bring it to the software engineers you physically take it down there and he's like well no 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 no. i have my secretary no. do i was that. like so why couldn't they <laughs> give it to them and they're like engineers can't talk to customers are you crazy right uh so peter he goes in a meeting with the bobs the bobs like peter but they fucking fire his friends and they're like peter we're gonna give you a promotion after he asks out jennifer aniston and she's like i would love to eat dinner and watch kung fu with you at your place and probably fuck you and they do that, and then he's like, oh, yeah, I'm getting a promotion. You Wait, hold on, hold on. You're going to fire my friends, and you're going to give me a promotion, even though I, like, haven't come to work? Yeah. So, like, Peter, like, after his hypnotherapist thing happens, he does not give a shit. 
He no. only happens into work because he's looking for his address book. Yeah, and the Bobs called him at home, and they're like, "We we need another meeting with you." And old Michael Bolton, our our good buddy that sings gangster rap, he uh he's like, "Hey, you have a meeting right now. You should not go into that meeting. You should leave work and say you're sick." And Peter's like, "No, I was like, well, let me go talk to these guys. This yeah, sounds talk, like fun." I'm gonna talk to the Bob. Oh yeah, I got a meeting it's with like the Bobs. A, the it's meeting long. meeting with the Bobs. Let's do it. And he goes in there and he tells it like it is. He does. Absolutely tells everything like, nah, I do literally 15 minutes of work in a given week. Right. 15 minutes. <laughs> he literally says, I have eight different bosses uh, that call me when I do something wrong. It's not a problem about I've been me. In that, I've been in that position before where you make one mistake and you have to hear it from six people. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, no. If it's I, if it's I not know. a problem with me, Bob's. It's a problem with motivating me. Right. It's like, I don't give a shit. I work my ass off, and tech makes more money, and what do I get? What do I get? Tired. Tired. This sucks. <laughs> they end up offering him a management position yeah. with four people underneath him. And he's like, huh. <laughs> but he does not give a single shit. And he just, he talks, there's so many spots in this movie where I'm like, these people are talking truth because these people don't actually even need a job. Like, they're doing nothing, but they're, they got, they got to flavor it up when they're talking to other people. Yeah. So, like, these bobs are considered efficiency experts. It's like, where's the inefficiency in your job it's like well this guy doesn't do anything why are you paying him <laughs> right you're right exactly so he finds out he's gonna get a promotion he finds out his other friends are getting fired and then he goes and he talks to him and he's like hey michael bolton you know how you're always talking about that virus you could make that would rip the company off big time and they wouldn't even know what happened and he's like yeah yeah and he's like how does it work and he sits down and he, he explains it and it's the plot of superman 3 he and says, he even it's says this is it's, have you ever seen Superman three? It's the same thing. So that's like, why we're gonna watch that bad movie. And that's he's our, like, that's our connection there. But Peter's like, Oh, are you saying the plot of Superman three is uh like they did that, right? They've they put a fix in place and he's like, Nah, not really. <laughs> right. So they, they decide to do it. He knows his friends are getting fucking fired. And yep. they just want to rip off this shitty company that they worked for because they're shitty. Fucking in attack. They're shitty. If somebody needs to get ripped off, it's shitty people. Talking to you, Bezos. Um, <laughs> um, well, we haven't even... The, 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 okay, so they, they decide they're going to do it. Michael makes the software. They have a really cool scene about them, like, moving the floppy disk around. Like, Dude, you remember how much data... It is hilarious. Remember because... how much data you used to be able to put on a floppy disk in 98? I watched, oh, my God. I watched this movie, and I was like... You know, like, they try to throw off, like, uh, this crime movie vi vibe in this particular scene about heisting, you know, millions of dollars. Or oh, yeah. Hundred th I think they said three. They're taking fractions of a cent per transaction times a couple thousand transactions over, over the years. course of ten years. And yeah. it was, like, four or five hundred thousand or something like that. Like, that's all we need. In 1999? Yeah. That's a lot of fucking money. Yeah, a couple hundred thousand dollars in 98? You'd be fucking sitting pretty, baby. So they were thinking like, all right, we're just going to, you guys are getting fired. I'm just not going to go to work as Peter said. You know, he's like, I'm just done. Yeah. And uh, we're going to have this sub account to ourselves that we're going to get paid. Uh, so they do this scene where they're uh, <laughs> heisting <laughs> in corporate America. Like middle corporate America, oh, too. Oh, it's fucking great. And it's an Apple computer. It's a floppy disk. And there's nothing to it. He's like, Michael Bolton puts they put it, it in. They're all like, well, that was easy. <laughs> it, like, because the scene's the, real intense. It's like it's Mission like, Impossible. You they know what do I mean? the behind the back floppy disk pass. Oh, yeah. It's very <laughs> covert. And uh, then they, they get it done and they're like, well, that was, that was easy. It, it just brings me back to like that time and place. Apple II computers with floppy disk in the front insert, mm -hmm. the commands oh, yeah. that they would enter to like shut Hell it yeah. down, the virus upload. It was like, uh, there's nothing to it. So another <laughs> another story point, they, there's a bit where they go to a barbecue and one of Peter's coworkers is like, oh man, 
the old face guy. Uh, one of Peter's coworkers is like, oh man, who's who's that chick with? And he's like, oh, it's me. And he's like, oh, wear rubber. She gets around. She fucked Lumberg. Uh, uh, the, the through parts of the movie, if you've never seen it, the the they introduce Peter's boss, Bill Goldberg. Gary, Gary, uh, no, Bill Lumberg. Lumberg. As a real piece of shit, not Bill Goldberg. That'd Goldberg. be a different movie. <laughs> He's fucking spearing shit. Oh, right, yeah, it's just fucking... Ah! <laughs> <laughs> No, Lumberg. Oh, yeah, so such he's, an, he's just the worst. And they, this guy tells Peter, he's like, oh, man. Yeah. She, she fucked Lumberg. And he's thinking about his boss. But in actuality, he means... Some random Lumberg. Some random athlete. Yeah. It's an athlete that was, like, traded to a different city. But if we were to talk on his boss... Yeah. His boss... What one of a, the highlights of the movie. What a great role. <laughs> that bit where he's like, he's having a dream with Lumberg fucking he's his fucking lady. His, and he's yeah. just like holding the leg. He's like, oh, he's like, Peter. He's like, hey. Well, I've get, got you here. Um, you get those TPS hey, reports. Uh, what's going What's going on? Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to need you to take um, care of those TPS reports. And if you come in on Saturday... Um. Yeah. Could you come in on Sunday too, please? Yeah. He, uh, the the he guy's the, he's the fucking worst. He's the worst boss that you could possibly ask for because he doesn't give a shit about you. He no. doesn't give a shit about your personal life. He gives yeah. a shit about his company. That's it's it. Like, we're going to lay off some people and you know, I'm going to need you to work a little harder. Um, yeah. We laid off a bunch of people. So I'm not going to pay you anymore. We laid off a bunch of people who relied on their income to live. <laughs> so we need you to come on, come in on Saturday. He's a terrible... His he has a park his own parking spot space yeah and his Porsche and, and his That's license a plate little says Porsche. my Porsche <laughs> Bill Lumber whatever the fuck his name is he is the epitome of dickhead bosses he represents all that is uh, corporate corporate lazy piece of lazy, like just telling like, you to telling you to do more for nothing like do what he's supposed to do but do it better. Do it more too. You can't do what he's supposed to. He doesn't do anything though. Right, but he's trying to. Yeah, they're like, how much motivate. time would you say you spend on a week working on these TPS reports when he's in there talking to the bobs and they Dude, just start interviewing him? The fucking TPS reports. Uh, he the first scene we have. What is? Do you know what TPS report I have no stands idea. for? I have what do you think it stands absolutely for? No, I hope it means nothing. If you had a if you had to guess, what would you say a TPS report is a report of? The <laughs> the um the paper TPS the pineal um the project support total projected sustainability report if I had to guess I'm gonna say the project support report. That would make zero sense, but it makes sense in corporate America. Right, because that's that's the game they play is nobody else can figure out our rules because like, we don't really get them either. Just make it really flowery with yeah. your communication and nobody knows. They're like, oh, this person's really important. In actuality, they don't know what the fuck they're doing. They're just talking shit out of their ass. Right. Yeah, yeah, for <laughs> sure. Which I can also do, as you've seen from this podcast that we make. I mean, that's what we're doing. Yeah, that's what I'm doing right but now. Just talking but out it's not corporate. So, welcome to talking out of your ass 101. <laughs> my name's Daniel King. I'll be your professor today. Um, yeah, so they, they go to the barbecue. They're like, they just did the thing, and they're like, oh, talking about. Oh, so the barbecue. Yeah, the barbecue is for the guy that got fired by the Bobs mm -hmm. that uh, had. He didn't have a job. Like, he was doing absolutely nothing at that. He that was company. really collecting a paycheck, and for he nothing. was thirty years in or some bullshit. And uh, we have a scene before the Bob's that he's like, "Hey, you know what? I have an idea about, um, you know, how you get paid. And uh, if I had this thing where I could make a, I can make a, I don't know, whatever is like jump, jump to, to conclusions, jump to conclusions." Yeah. And make it something like I would make, I'd be a millionaire, mm -hmm. make six figures immediately. And uh, he's like, So, this barbecue that they go to is all for him love, because love. he got hit by a fucking truck. Yeah, he he was gonna kill himself. He was His wife opens the garage door, he realizes he has a reason to live, <laughs> he backs out, 
and then as soon as he backs out to go to work, in he the, gets in, fucking plowed by a drunk driver. In the in the suburbs at nine a.m. or some bullshit, this guy mm-hmm. is driving thousand miles an hour. He is flying. In He's a, hauling ass <laughs> in a truck, and hammers his, and hammers the guy. And uh, the conversation around what happened in uh, Peter's world mm-hmm. with the old face guy. Yeah, yeah. It was like, hey, did you hear about Tom? He uh. Like it's an upbeat conversation. He, oh yeah! Like, oh yeah! He got man. out of this fucking world. Oh yeah! He's fucking out of here, bro. No, <laughs> he's Tom's fucking, great. He's Tom's great. You know, you know, and and uh, Peter's like, what happened? And he's like, he got, you know, he got hit by he a, got hit by a drunk, a drunk driver. driver. But uh, you know, it's just you know, broken legs, a broken back. He's a couple fucking of... seven figure settlement. <laughs> That's what the fuck I'm talking about. Yeah, like he like they like explain like how broken physically is but he's getting paid seven figures man they like, go to his barbecue and he's like happy as a clam it's the happiest <laughs> it's like i'm not sure why we should in anyone here should be happy except i don't even know why like, the guy in the fucking neck brace is happy like what what is wrong with this he's fucking scenario because he doesn't have to work anymore he doesn't that's have the, to work that's the whole wouldn't it be nice to never have to work a day in your life? Well, I'm we, told if you find what you love and you can make it profitable, you never have to work a day. But what would you I give find, up? Uh, what would I give up to not work? Would you give up your whole body, like this neck, back, and legs? Like he hmm. literally is fucking hurt. <laughs> yeah, he's super fucked. <laughs> he up. is super happy. Now. Yeah. The the fucking story continues. They wind up. They do the virus, and then the they yeah, the weekend comes. They're like, all right, we'll check the balance on Monday to see how it goes. They check the balance. Well, Oops. Like Saturday or whatever. It's, it's a lot. It's, it's 300000 Yeah, it's like $300,000. It's supposed to be like maybe 3000 or something like that. Yeah. And uh, like, how did this happen? And and Michael Bolton's like, uh, <laughs> we got to talk about Michael Bolton. We got to talk about him Michael in a second. Michael Bolton, he's the best. We got to talk about him in a second. But he's like, I don't know. It, it must have been a mundane fucking process that i always forget about like and it's a rounding error <laughs> you put the decimal yeah. point in the wrong spot yeah for a rounding error that's <laughs> probably one of the things that has to be really precise yeah and he's like it was so mundane that it's stupid to even think about it. i was like bro we're trying to rip off a lot of money <laughs> uh, right right yeah sorry it's too mundane uh so th- they get upset there's the 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 bit with I want to talk about Milton for a second. We'll get hold on, hold on, let's 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 make him the final part. Of it. Okay, all right. Because we got to talk about uh, Michael too. Think of the bit. software error and 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 Samir and fucking Michael Bolton are furious with Peter. Yep. They're like fuck you, man. And then they leave, and he like knocks on his wall so his neighbor. He's like Lawrence. Oh, you we got to talk about we got to talk about all these characters. Like, oh, Lawrence. yeah, we will. <laughs> Laura, Lawrence is different, man. This is where you see the famous clip of Lawrence being like. Peter's like, hey, man, anybody ever tell you you got a case of the Mondays? And Lawrence is like, no, hell no, man. Hell no, man. I think you'd get your ass beat for saying <laughs> something like that. Uh, True story in a man's world. Yeah, so they just have thin walls in his apartment is the gag. And his next door neighbor is Lawrence. Lawrence comes over. Anyway, those guys leave and they're pissed off at Peter. They're like, you're a bad person. You're a bad friend. So he knocks on the wall. He's like, hey, Lawrence, you want to hang out? Lawrence is like, no, man, I don't want you to fuck up my life, too. He goes, no, nah, man, I don't want you fucking up my life, too. He, like, mumbles it. He's like, no, nah, man. Oh, man. He's like, fuck you. Uh, it sounds like you fucking everybody up over there. <laughs> but Lawrence, probably low-key second favorite character in the movie. Yeah, for sure. I wish the movie yeah. focused around focused around Lawrence. Like he's a happy go lucky. Wouldn't be office space. It's like, It'd I be under- like construction I, space. Yeah, I understand my job. I understand what I got to do on a day to day basis. Mm-hmm. I don't hate it. I don't love it. But I get you know I, I get to say fuck you. Like I get to say fuck at work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's that's most of it is to just to be able to have a disagreement with somebody and tell them to go fuck themselves. Yeah, go fuck yourself. I'm digging this fucking hole. What are you gonna say about it? What is there to say about digging a hole? Fuck you. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> We're so 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 they upload so, the virus. Peter decides that he should take the rap for it. There's yeah. no way out. They've had this huge banking error. He's like, I, I fucked this. This is my baby. This is on me. Yeah. So he takes the um, like he he takes a withdrawal. Is it a money order? It's not a money order. Yeah. It's uh I, yeah, a, it's like uh, a, a check or something. No, what are they called? Um, savings bonds. 
the savings a, bonds. One of those is like three hundred thousand dollars worth. He slides under his. Pretty sure hated. the savings bonds. He writes a letter about how it was all him, and then he slides it under his boss's door, and then he leaves. And then he, after he immediately tries to get it back out from under the door because he's like, I've, I've made yeah, a terrible he, error. Which the door is actually unlocked. <laughs> When Milton walks in, he's like, I'm just walking. Uh, yeah, he just walks right in. <laughs> no, nobody checked the door. Um, anyway, the, the whole movie. So now you've got this this pivotal point where as soon as somebody sees that envelope, Peter's going to prison. He's going to prison. And and they've had this discussion between Samir, uh, Michael, mm-hmm. and uh, Peter. They're like, white collar prison. You're not going to, you know, yeah, nobody's yeah. going to fuck with you there. It's like, it's like a resort. You can have resort. conjugal visits. And they later come to realize, like, white collar prison is not white collar. It's like the, it's the lawyer, still prison. The lawyer at the that the barbecue is like the lawyer that's representing the uh, the guy that got hurt is like, yeah, uh, I heard you need to um, like you know like state your position. Like you got to fuck somebody up your first day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I think that might be the first movie where that is actually said out loud. Like like. You go to prison, you got to fuck somebody up. I don't know. I hate that, though, that that's a thing in America. Like, if you go to prison, you either have to fight somebody or you're going to get fucked by somebody. Right. Like, I hate that that's the... That's the thought the, process. The overarching theme of prison in the United States. That's awful. Prisoners, do you know? <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Is that, I mean, that, is that the way it goes? If you've been to prison, you either had to fight or fuck. Did you fight and then fuck? Or were you were you fucked and then fought? Or how, how'd that go? It's just a movies at gmail.com. So the whole time, this is where they're at in this pivotal point in the story. And the whole time you've got this character named Milton. 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 He mumbles a lot to himself. He only cares about uh. two things. His paycheck and his stapler. That's it. His stapler. He does a shitload of work. Turns out he was actually laid off five years ago, but a glitch in payroll <laughs> allowed him to continue to be paid. So he kept showing up because nobody ever told him that he was laid off because he's awkward and nobody wants to talk to him. So, so one scene so with Milton. Like there's his one first, scene where he's like, I could. Well, I could, well his, I could, one, one of his burn, first scenes is I like. Could, I could bring he's, this building he's, down. He called, he calls Peter, who's his next mm-hmm. door cubicle per, par, yeah. person. Yeah. And he calls him on his on on the phone. He's like, "Hey, uh, I need to talk to you." Uh, and he's like, um, "He's just he's, he's mumbling the whole time." And he's oh, like, "Oh, dude, he's mumbling he's constantly." Like, I, I, I'll burn this place down. Like, like you can kind of hear like it's like if they move my desk one more time because they moved it five times already. Like literally, they moved his desk. Five like upper management is just fucking with Milton at this point. He's like, if they move my desk again, I'm gonna burn this place down. I'm burn, I'm burn, 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 burn the, burn this place down. Yeah. Uh, and uh, like, the very next scene, Lombard comes through and is like, "Hey, Milton," and he's talking with the Bobs, and they're looking at him. They're like, "Stapler." <laughs> yeah, like, he like, goes like, and <laughs> takes his stapler. <laughs> like, hon, I wonder how much money. Hon, did they make a Milton stapler out of this? No. No, that's did, already, did, that's a streamlined, just red stapler. I feel like the staple company, whoever did this movie, or part of this movie, like, came in on the back end, like, we're going to make a lot of money off this. No, that's just, a speti- that's just a particular stapler. Is there a Milton stapler now? That's before, th- this is like before uh, targeted advertising. I need to know like this. Like, the reason in all the Marvel movies, all the cars are Audis. Right, Milton make, sneak in make here. this a Milton stapler. Yeah, yeah. I fucking wish if I had a stapler. If I was like, fuck, I need a stapler, and I went to go Milton. buy one, I would buy one of those red streamline Milton. Sta- <laughs> I would buy the Milton brand. Yeah, because he's very particular about it, and if it's good enough for Milton, it's good enough for me. So they eventually move Milton. Like they keep moving his desk. He's like, yeah, and uh, Milton's like, they move me again. I'm. Uh, like he mumbles the entire time. Like you're not sure what he's saying, but he gets fed if up. you listen, yeah, he's saying, "I'm gonna burn this place down." I'm, yeah, he's I'm like, burn- I, "I can burn this place down. I can burn down the building, and no one would know." And, and no one pays attention to Milton. No one gives a shit. Like, yeah. So you get to this. They move him to the fucking basement, and like Milton has his desk now in the basement where mm-hmm. he realizes he's not getting paid. Nope. <laughs> and he's uh, uh, Lombard comes down there and say, like, "Hey." Milton, after after Lombard knows he's not getting paid, he's like, hey, could you go look for cockroaches? Yeah, could you get some pesticide and clear out the cockroach <laughs> problem down here? God, Lombard's such a dick. 
So Peter rolls back up to the office because he's like, he's ready to face the music. Yeah. And the building's on fire because Milton fucking burned it down. Yeah. And Milton also took those fucking he, traveler he, checks or traveler or to, whatever or, they are. He gets paid. Milton, Milton the guy just took them. They get overlooked the entire movie. Not just the entire movie, entire mm-hmm. career. Yep. Even there's a scene where he's uh asking for cake. Lombard's fucking 40th oh, dude, birthday. Oh, dude, the cake scene, it's great. And he's like, hey, I'm, uh, I'm going to need some cake. Because like, they're like, he's Milton saying, just like, pass like, the cake. Oh, pass the cake me, to the next person. Maybe have some cake. Because last, like, time, last time, time I didn't get a slice of cake. And yeah. they mm-hmm. said that there would be cake. He's like, <laughs> maybe enough people here. And it, and so, but the slices of the piece mm-hmm. of cake is not proportionate to the amount of people that are in the office. And I, it was, it was, it was, last time I did not receive a piece of cake. And <laughs> last time I, like I did, I did not receive a piece of cake. It's just, it's that. It's just him mumbling and rambling. And it's fucking... Like, Sometimes it's really dark. <laughs> a guy that lives in his own head that never really speaks out at, at anything. Like right. it bothers him, but he's just, he it bothers bothers him in his own head. Like he right. doesn't let it, anyone else know. He kind of does subtly. <laughs> yeah, and uh, it's like he uh, he gets fed up with it. He's like, so when Peter comes into work and he's like, I'm gonna face the fear of criminality of white collar crime Mm -hmm. i'm going i'm going to jail the building's the building's on fire and then peter gets a job working at the construction company with lawrence and he loves it oh let's talk about lawrence let's talk about lawrence i fucking love being outside this is great i fucking love it i'm into it yeah so lawrence is peter's next door neighbor not next door neighbor he is knocking you knock on the, you know, you ever live in an apartment with next to somebody that has a drywall? You ever, you ever live in an apartment and have super cool neighbors? I did. I once upon a time. Yes, I have. I have. Once upon a time, I lived in an apartment in St. Louis, and I lived next to Brent and Haley. If there is any fucking possible chance that Brent and Haley are listening to this podcast, fucking love you guys, and I hope you're doing really well, or each of you individually, if you split up, whatever. <laughs> uh but man, it's hard to come by. Good roommates. They were they good, were cool, man. We used, to, we used to people. hang. We used to hang out and party all the time. And uh, I also used to live next to a couple of girls named Angie and Angel, and they were also a lot of fun and would like to hang out a lot. Nice. I mean, Lawrence Dar- is the epitome of the greatest neighbor. It's like, hey, bro, hey, bro, fuck, tit- turn on channel nine. There's tits, titties. There's titties <laughs> on channel nine, bro. <laughs> Uh, which was a definitely a, a particular like said, particular era of uh, TV consumer television. Um, and Lawrence, he just has to knock on the door, say, "Hey, turn on Channel Nine. There's titties." And all throughout the movie, Lawrence is the he is the smartest person in the movie. He knows his purpose. Yep. He knows his life projection. He he knows what it is. Yeah, he is the smartest person. He's like. He tells it like it is, uh, and uh, Peter asks him a few questions. Um, even like when they're going going over their uh, their plan to uh, to rob the place. Oh yeah, right. And they're all like, "We can't tell our wives. We can't tell anybody about this." And then they're all about ready to leave. And Orange goes, "He he's next door. Like he's not in the room." He's like, "Don't worry, man. He's I like, won't tell worry. nobody. I won't tell nobody over here." So what did you let's. Let's uh let's rate this. Let's and rate And then Lawrence this. also says mm-hmm. he goes, What would you do for a million dollars? Oh my god, the million dollars <laughs> thing. He's like, you know, remember your high school counselor used to tell you if you had a million dollars, what would you do? What and would in, you... in the mid nineteen nineties to early nineteen nineties, if you had a million dollars, you could do whatever you wanted to. That's how and, and that's how it worked. Peter back then. explains the purpose of that question was if you were rich what would you do then figure out how to do that for a living exactly yeah but not all jobs make money so like that's true what you know so it's kind of a meaningless question but what what would you do in this life nobody fucking knows nobody absolutely no. nobody knows what they're going to do if at I could fucking pick, if 15 I could, if i could pick oranges 7 days a week and make a 100,000 dollars a year i would pick oranges right i don't give a shit <laughs> so, <laughs> like, like i feel pretty good about this who am i hanging out with all day yeah. like what's going on um the community you build around your work is important mm-hmm. i don't want to go into all that but uh the question comes in and Lawrence like um uh, Two chicks so, at so, one time. So Peter knocks on on his uh, wall, this drywall. Yep. He goes, Lawrence, 
<laughs> he had a million dollars. What would you do? He's like, man, I'll do two chicks at one time. Like, didn't even have to think about two it. Two chicks at one He's time. He's thought about this a thousand times. He'd do two chicks at one time. And Peter questions him. He's like, that's it? That's it? He's yeah. like, yeah, man, I always <laughs> want to do two chicks at one time. And Peter's like, man, I don't think you need two uh, million dollars to do two chicks at one time. Yeah, he's, he's like, like no, nah, man. He's like, kind of girls that like to do like two kind of two girls that would like to do one dude at the same time. <laughs> Need they they like guys that have money, and he'd be like, oh, "I don't know if that's true." And he'd be like, "Yeah, but those girls do." And it just, I don't know. It's, the a, whole it's a ridiculous great. scene. Like he's ridiculous and he's fucking sexist, but God, it's funny. It's just it's funny shit how simple he is. The, uh, and he, that is kind of it. Peter? Is like Peter was in a Peter was in a position where he he was living an overcomplicated life. He would Over. have been happy with a more simple. Yeah, just simplify simple everything. Thing. Yeah, yeah. I of think course. if everybody looked at their own life and just said, "What is causing me so much stress in this fucking world?" Mm -hmm. You just simplified it to, "Why am I doing that?" Right. Like, well, it's always for money, probably. We got we got to thumb it. We're running. Okay, we're okay. running at time. Right. So, out of thumbs that you have slammed a staple into. How many stapled thumbs would you give this out of 10, 10 thumbs? So I'm going to preface my thumbs with saying that this movie had great dialogue. It is really fun. I forgot how funny it was. It was uh, on, honestly, I really It did. was not a movie like where like action scenes, yada, yada. It's, it's boring. Cor like, how do you make a movie out of corporate America like, and make it, it is, good? Yeah, it's, it can be The dialogue drab. in this movie is great. The soundtrack is funny. Mm -hmm. just, just because we all it feels real right it feels real it feels yeah this is what it would be it's relatable for sure so if you've ever had a shitty job in anything corporate where you sat in a cubicle it's relatable it's very uh, it's, oh and if God. you haven't it's relatable in the fact that you can watch it and know what your future is like probably thumbs for me yeah I love the movie. It's a kind of a cult movie, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, it's maybe I'm it's da I'm dating myself. No, it's but definitely going back and rewatching it. It's I'm definitely like, a cult classic. I'm like, man, that's a, that's a good fucking movie. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go a hard. So last time I did soft. Okay. All right. Yeah. Ooh, hard well, eighty five. Hard eight point five. Eight point five. Okay. For hard eight point five thumbs, I was gonna go hard eight. Okay. Okay. I was gonna go hard eight just because I wouldn't quite say it's timeless. It's like not this, timeless. This, no, this movie has but an expir this movie has an expiration date. There is it a does. date of people that are born past this day that that won't the get it. The Y two K shit. Like what is that even? Nah, I, yeah. It used to th that you, part you would still appreciate this appreciate movie you. and not know about the Y two K thing. That part doesn't matter. Uh but some of it is just not for everybody. So we'll go 8.5 and 8. Okay. That's yeah. not bad, man. That's, like that's fucking pretty solid. I'm liking it. The dialogue for me was made. It actually made the movie. Even not not even Peter's part, but Jennifer Anderson. Like the flair. An I forgot Jennifer Anderson. The was flair in this. thing? Yeah. It's like. Oh, dude. When she's like flip, she oh, loses her God. shit on her boss because well, she's been hanging out with Peter and well, he's like. Yeah, you need to put more flair well, on your uniform. And she's like, I thought 15 was the minimum requirement. And he goes, well, 15 is, but don't you want to express yourself and be above the minimum requirement? <laughs> and, uh, yeah, she just eventually flips out and flips them all off and tells them off and tells them to go fuck himself. Like, it's he, great. That part, like, even, like, it, she's not corporate America, but she's a waitress at a place that was like, okay, you have 15, the minimum is 15 flair. Mm-hmm. But what does it say about you just having 15 pieces of flair? She's like, ah, do you want me to have more flair? <laughs> I, like, I, I, can, I, I can add more. And he's like, no, no, you're not getting what I'm saying. What does it mean to have more flair? He's like, She's like, I don't fucking know. So like, if you want it to be 32 <laughs> pieces, I'll do 32 like, what pieces. What do you want? I, no, I'm here um, for a fucking job. Get off my back. It's great, though, man. This was a really fun revisit. I think it was a good pick on your part. I hadn't seen this in like 13 years, and I really had a kick watching it. I so it. If you're I loved out, watching if it. If you're out there and you've never seen it, man, it's a, it's a good comedy. Is it timeless? I don't yeah. know about that. But if it fits in your age gap and you remember Y2K, then yeah, it's 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 right on the money for you. Yeah. Uh, and and if not, it's still funny. You just can ign ignore some parts and go, "What the fuck?" You can watch the opening scene and laugh your ass off. 
Yeah, if you've ever driven in a city. <laughs> if you've ever been in a traffic jam and you hate shit. Yeah, it's a good scene for there it. There you go. I mean, there's a lot of scenes just like that. Where so, it's just... well, just like that, just like in the movie Superman 3. Right. That we're going to go watch. Uh, here's a fake thing. We'll be right back to talk about Superman 3. <clears throat> Shut it up, ban it, ban it, ban it, ban it, ban it, Welcome back to the washroom. My name's Nick Fickle. And I'm here in the studio with Farnal Bfex, CEO and creator of the Bluetooth Bar of Soap. <laughs> so, Flex, the... Flex, uh, just tell us a little the, bit about your product. Well, you know, one might say, how could you make a Bluetooth Bar of Soap? And I would say to that person, shut the fuck up. <laughs> This, this is, is my dream. In my head, I was like, with micro jets. <laughs> and what I would say, Johnson, to those people is microchips. Also, using our new waterproof technology, we're able to implement Bluetooth in a fucking bar of soap that gets wet. For just 15 payments of $59.99, you can enjoy our new Bluetooth bar of soap. That lets you listen to music through a bar of soap yeah. in your shower. Yeah, now I've read in the New York Times that the soap is like it's like made out of uh like a lava rock and pumice and uh what what are the other ingredients in it? Semen. I'm also legally required to tell you that there are bits of uranium in this bar of soap. I'm done with that. It sounds like it's probably exfoliating. It's a really good time. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. It's so good for your skin. So it's I see here it's also made out of uh, bleach and, and camel dick fat. Yes. Tell me, how is that harvested? <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> we, uh... <laughs> Well, we Im we import the camel dick fat from various countries that will not be named, and through a special patented technology, we're able to import that into the bar of soap that has Bluetooth, uh, which enhances the output and the distance that you're able to listen to music. Just fucking buy it. <laughs> of course, yeah. Uh, you know, I'm also told that... Uh... It tracks your uh, like how many how many scrubs versus uh, washing it and playing with playing with it. It has a we uh, playing with it alert yes. that you can set on the app. Yep, there's got to be an app, and you just have to use your your Apple ID or your your uh, Google Google your Google Gr Google your Google. We found it very important to have an application on a cellular device that will control this bar of soap. It interacts with your body. Yeah. Um, and I understand you only have to have 14 pre-procedural injections <laughs> of magnetic microchips in your body <laughs> to be able to uh, to use this amazing product. Is yes. that true? I mean, of course. Of but course they're, they're, it's Listen, true. listen. That doesn't matter. This bar of soap also <laughs> tracks your sleep. That's incredible. Why shouldn't it? Yeah, it puts nano nano beings in your in your that go to your in your blood in your bloodstream. Listen, yeah, <laughs> I could talk all day about how invasive this product is, but what I really want you to know, if you don't buy this, you're a fucking piece of shit. <laughs> buy our product, Blue Bar. Blue Bar. Brought to you by it's by a man. Shut it up, ban it, ban it, ban it, ban it, ban it, ban it, 
Special thanks to Brad Sexton for our jams. Please check out his latest project at sons.bandcamp.com. That is S-U-N-D-S dot bandcamp.com. Thanks to Lamplighter Productions for our artwork. Uh, please check out more of their stuff on Instagram at lamplighter underscore productions underscore I-L. First time listener, we're anywhere podcasts are found. But if you don't subscribe to any of those services, listen to the show for free on our website. It's just the number two, movies.buzzsprout.com. That's it's just two movies.buzzsprout.com. Want to get in touch with the show? Email us at it's just two movies at gmail.com or find us on Twitter or Instagram at it's just two movies. Want to support the show? Great. Leave a like, comment, or subscribe on whatever platform tickles your fancy. Uh, and one last thank you to our editor, head writer, producer, and host. Uh, oh, that uh, th- those are all me. So, anyway, back to the show. We're back, bitch. We watched Superman 3. Was it good? No, it was real bad. Uh, it's about a whole bunch of things. Uh, most of them are like not easy to follow, but uh, we'll, we'll get into it. This is a 1983 action adventure, two hours, five minute runtime, way longer than I would have preferred. It is extremely long. Uh, it's on HBO Max right terrible. now, so that's good. <laughs> it's got a 5.10 out of, uh, 5 out of 10 on IMDb, 30% Rotten Tomatoes, 44% Metacritic. Uh, came out June 17th, 1983, directed 83. by Richard Lester. Yeah, mm-hmm. it, it made yeah. $80.2 million in the box office. Damn. Yeah, so this was in probably eighty three. This was probably a way profitable movie coming off of Superman one and two. I could see why. Uh, Christopher uh, stars obviously uh, Christopher Reeve as Superman, uh, Margot Kidder, Annette O'Toole, Richard Pryor, Mark McClure, Pamela Stephenson, and Jackie Cooper, and yeah. you know a Nobody handful, a handful of others. People. Yeah, they, these are Richard Pryor and uh, this Clark is a Clint movie that came out in nineteen eighty three. So. I will tell you the couple of things that I have about this. Uh, I can tell you what Google says about it. And I'll, I'll, because this movie, it's got a lot going on. It's got a little too much going on for me personally. Can I, so I'm just going to read exactly what Google says can I that pause? this movie's about. Yeah. I, the movie we watched prior, what was it? Uh, the good movie. Office Space. Office Space. <laughs> um, this movie made $85 million in 83. Yeah. Office Space was nine, right? No, it's like, like 98. No, it was like nine. 99, yeah. No, no, nine million dollars. Oh, yeah, yeah, whatever it was. Like, Office Space was this, way better than this. And this movie made. <laughs> holy shit, this movie made so much money. Yeah, um, so uh, according to Google, computer programmer Gus Gorman, played by Richard Pryor, is hired. By financial tycoon Ross Webster, played by Robert Vanaw, to seize control of a weather satellite and annihilate Columbia's coffee crop. When Superman, played by Christopher Reeve, manages to thwart the plan, Webster commands Gorman to use the satellite to locate kryptonite, the man of steel's mortal weakness. But missing an unknown element in the kryptonite, replaced by Gorman with tar, causes an unintended side effect. When presented to Superman. There's so let me tell so, you what this movie is actually about. There's so uh, many things. It's about Superman doing good where he can. And then there's a really awful convoluted plan to, to thwart Superman. Hold on. I'm almost done. And then, uh, you know, oh, Superman shit. overcomes it. He overcomes Kryptonite. Richard Pryor oh. helps him out. And then everything's hunky-dory. And the rest of this movie is fucking just filler of that. So... It is literally Superman. Like, if you look at it today's perspective of what Superman can do and what he should be able to do, this movie's over in five minutes. It really is. This is one. They made a Ah. a (laughs) two-hour movie out of a seven-page comic book. Like, if he, like, oh, my God. Infuriating. Yeah, it's, it's really hard to sit through. Now, that being said... Man, a lot of the effects in this look fucking incredible, especially for the day. Yeah, 83, uh, flying and stuff. Like, oh, my God. They look pretty good. They look like, amazing. Nice. Yeah, like, like him like him handling huge metal objects like they're paperweights. It, it looks great. Yeah. A lot of the effects, actually, I found to be incredibly impressive. Like, one of the first special effects movies I remember ever seeing, like, in a theater, was probably Batman 1989. Okay. 
and this is comparable, if not better, than some of the effects that are in the original Batman 1989 with yeah. Michael Keaton. Okay. I, I can see that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like they're great. Like a lot of the effects in this movie look really fucking good. They they don't throw you out of the story. No, like, not at you're all. Like mm, special effects, you know, you're not thinking, oh, that that's weird. No, what throws you out of the story is the fact there's not a real cognitive fucking story going on. There is zero story. There's so many plot points and so many characters and so many people that like have have two or three minutes of chewing scenery that don't have a they're not in it, though. It's just not necessary. You could easily cut 47 minutes off of this movie and have the exact same movie. Oh, I mean, 30 minutes. I think just 30-minute movie, this, this would be it. <laughs> yeah, done. yeah, for sure. It's just, it's, it's, um... And there's no, there's not it's a good... It's long for what it is. There's, there's not a lot of meat to it. There's not you know what I mean? good dialogue. There's, it's all filler. Well, this is I, a filler movie. I think I think the biggest problem with these, uh, the Superman movies, and, and again, I don't know if I said earlier, but I love Superman 1 and 2. Mm. But the reason, the, the, the thing that's very peculiar about these is it's a 1980s movie about a 1950s comic strip right and they haven't changed that they didn't in the 1950s anything. they just imagined a guy you know 30 years in the future that that would he would be superman this is how he would and be. yeah that's the exact movie that they're doing that's what you get and that's why you get 98 million Christopher or Reeve, what a great clark kent He's amazing though. what a great clark kent what a fucking nerd you he, know what i mean I looked at this movie and I, I looked, loved it. Okay, I have. I'm an honest person. I haven't seen Superman one, two, or three, or any of the previous Supermans prior to one and the two twenty first century. Haven't seen them. He Clark Kent is a fucking nerd, mm. and he plays it off as a fucking nerd. I'm like, yeah, I agree. Oh, I he's agree. Great. You're a nerd, dude. And, and I, I was talking to Danny during the movie. I was like, man, it's. It has to be about the framing of the movie, like how you frame him as like he's a huge dude. He's humongous. He's huge. Like so, it's kind of hard to like hide that fact. But the framing of the movie, it's like that's where it kind of comes into play. Is like they frame him to where he doesn't look as big when he's his nerdiest self. You don't ever get the feeling that like oh, um, he's a small person. He's six foot four. Yeah, he's he's giant. His yeah, shoulders a, are fucking. He's a big he's dude. A, he's a giant. He's a giant person. He's a big boy. He looks like Henry Cavill, but who, more more classic. I think if you Henry look... Cavill is who you think Superman should be. That's who he should be. But he yeah, does, Henry Cavill can't play the nerd part of it's it. It's because he looks like Christopher Reeves. Yeah, so Christopher Reeves he can he plays the nerd part very well, and it's like oh yeah, you can turn turn into Superman. So this. So my problem with Superman has always been is Tell Superman is fucking Superman. Like he is. Like who You're right. Nobody like no superhero or whatever can compete with Superman. Yeah. He can laser through you anytime he wants with his eyes. With his eyes. Yeah. He could speed thrust power like whatever. Yep. Like straight through you. Unless you've got at a any magic point, unless you've got a magic rock. Like at any point he wants to, he any super hero villain underneath him, he can immediately just crush. Well and y yes and no. It depends on canonically in the comic books. Like like Darkseed. Darkseed's a bad motherfucker and Superman can't fuck with him. Uh uh um so, so let me say that what's his name? What's his name actually kills Superman? Uh, Lex in, in the death of Superman. No, it's uh, not Lex uh, Luthor. Uh. It's um. See, I, so I don't know. I don't know that well on Superman comics, but it's just so hard to to uh, portray that story of being a regular person that can overcome a, basically a god figure. Doomsday. Doomsday yeah. kills Superman. Okay. But it's just hard to like like how do you wrap a story like Batman? You wrap a story around because there's a human element. Yeah, Superman is no—he's not human. Like he's a god. Like it's the same thing with Thor. 
But like the Marvel, the MCU, he's like both though, because he was like he was raised on Earth as a normal human boy. They were like, "Don't use your powers for fucking shit." So he was raised like a regular guy. He just can do these extraordinary things. But if you look at all of the other superheroes, like Batman, Spider Man, mm-hmm. Iron Man, they're all human. They're all human. Right. At the end of the day, they're from Earth. They're human. Superman's always been the op he's overpowered like he can at any moment crush anybody he wants he just chooses yeah, consciously right. not to uh but there are it, plenty of there are plenty of comic runs where like superman but he's bad and have you seen the movie brightburn it's because it's pretty mm, much that it's like what if it. super what if superman was a serial killer though yeah, it'd be terrifying. And he was a kid. Like, he's a kid. He's, like, th- like 12, 13, and he just says he wants to start murdering people or whatever. But I kind of... I feel like that makes what... Like, the Superman concept is what makes storytelling good. Because you have Thor in the MCU. Yeah. It's basically the same thing. He could do whatever the fuck... He, well, not, he can't shoot lasers out of his eyes. But he is a god compared to humans. Okay. Right? But they portray him as a human element with, you know, em- emotions and all that to the earth yeah. part of it, I guess. But Superman has always been above that, I feel like. And they've, I don't know if they've ever told the story r- as well as the MCU has. As far as the films are concerned, I agree with you. Uh, comic runs, there are lots of really compelling, gripping Superman stories that really give you his human element and like kind of how, how he feels alone from everyone else in the world because he is a little bit different than everyone else. And that's kind of his character arc is coming to acceptance with the fact that he's different than everyone, but these are the people around him and he wants to protect them. That's most of his character arc. Which is the superhero, yeah. like, layout. Yeah, pretty but much. But, like, superhero, uh, Superman being the first kind of superhero is... I don't know that he's been done proper justice in a, in, so. a, in a film. I, I, so, I love the aspect of Superman. I love, I love Superman. Like, yeah. It's like it's What's some, not to who, love about a fucking indestructible guy that can do anything that's you badass? Run, you run up against a story concept, I guess... That is like, how do you make it relatable or how do you make a movie that has consequences against somebody that doesn't give a shit about anything? Right. Like Lois, maybe. Uh, yeah. <laughs> His mom. Yeah. Whatever. And, that, and that's about it for reals. Like, he could give a shit about Earth. Like, I'm out. I, I, I'm not a heavy comic person. I I would be, but I just don't have time to read it. I have a fair amount of comic book history. Uh, so and that's, that's I, don't, what, I don't know if I'm missing why, something there. That's I'm, why I try am. not to lean into the comic book movies too heavy on the show because they're 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 my favorite. Like that's my bread and butter. Like right. I love that shit because I I cut my teeth on it. That's my favorite fiction is right. comic books. Yeah, I mean, I there's specific ones I used to uh, read, but then I. I never had them enough, like in order to be able, like, mm-hmm. all right, well, I I, I can't keep up with this. I'm Spawn, X Men, Fantastic Four, <laughs> Spider Man, Batman. Uh, I I read I read just about anything. Justice League. I re- would read anything I could get my fucking hands on, as far as comic books were concerned. I used to trade comic book playing cards what a fucking nerd right that's amazing yeah i know you have some I, probably at my mom and dad's house <laughs> in a closet somewhere yeah probably oh, uh man. no man I, I i just like that shit it's a, th- it's a thing that i'm really into and i try not to make this podcast about that because this podcast is about movies not right. just about comic book movies like uh, but the comic I do, but people I can do, have their I own. I do love that shit. Like anytime you want to come back on the show, if you're like, let's watch a comic book movie, I am a hundred, hundred and ten percent in. My my and problem I will, is I will nerd the fuck out. My problem is I'm I I don't listen or I don't know, listen read enough uh, comics to be like enveloped into that world. But, yeah, but I watch enough to be like I watch enough film or whatever. To see what they're trying to portray. So, like, there's a disconnect. I'm like, people that read things understand it in a different level because the thought process is different. Yeah. Like, it's like, this is what you perceive this person to be. And it's like, I've, uh, uh, I've got something you could borrow if you want. 
You know what I mean? Just like some good, easy, like breezy graphic novels. I don't have time for it. <laughs> Yeah, and, and, yeah, that's, and that's how I feel. I've been reading one comic book for almost a whole fucking year now because I was going back recently. We're we're gonna do a clip show uh, in November sometime. Like it's like an award show with funny clips from the from the episode or whatever. Uh -huh. We're gonna do that. I mean, whoever, yeah, whatever. <laughs> uh, I was hoping at least that if I could get you and Bird to do so it, Bird's that'd be great. Definitely gonna be like on the comic list. He's, he's hilarious. Oh man. yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, but I'm going to do a, we're going to do an award show. Like we're going to talk about the most popular movies we watched over the course of the mm. year, the, the best bad movies, the worst, worst movies, the, you know, we'll talk about all of it. I, I like it. Yeah. Hunt, can we have more than one, like two mics in here? Can we all be like uh, talking? Yeah. Yeah. We, we can work it out. But uh, yeah, no, that, that's a, that's a thing that we're going to do. And when we do that, uh, it's going to be a good time, but where was I going with that? I have I'm no sorry. idea. Where are we at? Hunt, we, did we talk about Richard Pryor in this movie? Uh, Yeah, Richard Pryor's in this. Richard Pryor's in this movie. I think Pete, I, I was talking in the He's kind of- He's pandering. I think he's in the kind a, of the middle of his career peak, kind he, of like- I'm He's just, yeah, he's just pandering. I'm going to be this. an actor now, and he is an actor in this movie. <laughs> he's a, If you don't know who Richard Pryor is, he's a comedian. It's hilarious. Oh, you should probably watch a couple of his shows. He's yeah. not an actor. He was like the OG Chris Rock. Like, Chris Rock looked up to Richard Pryor. Yeah. Everybody looked up to him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he just was funny and outrageous and said whatever he wanted. He, he, and, said, uh, he, wanted. he, said, he said the truth, and in a funny way that made you feel like a situation was, I don't want to talk about that, but he made you talk about it and he made you laugh about it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, no, Richard Pryor's fantastic. I was a student at comedy for a long time, so I watched a lot of, like, old comedians. Like, man, when I was a young teenager, like 13, 14, 15, I watched a lot of stand-up comedians' routines that had been dead for years, <laughs> like, when yeah. I watched yeah. it. And I was like, man, this is fucking great. Or I get why this is funny, and, like, I don't like this, but I understand what they're going for. Back like back then, it used to be like just telling their perspective of how they perceive the world and how you know like their impression on it. But they also made it funny. Yeah, late seventies, mid seventies, mid eighties, he was an outspoken black guy that had funny thoughts on his on culture everything. and yeah. how how he perceived his culture to be in the United States. Mm -hmm. It's like. It's funny. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you can't, you can't do shit about that, man. He's doing his fucking thing. Uh, Superman 3, though. Oh, yeah. Talking I don't know. I, like, I don't have anything to say about this. It's just, it's it's too much. It's too much Superman there 3. Two, the biggest, this movie was the, two hours long. The we watched an hour thing and that, a half. The biggest thing that this suffers from, the biggest thing this suffers from is being, an, uh, is being 30 minutes too long. 30 it's minutes. Ju it's just, there is easily... There's easily 30 to, I would argue, almost 50 minutes of just totally unnecessary stuff in it to fill the space. Does it look good? Yes. And that's what I think they were going for was visual spectacle. Clearly, this made money. What would I have done about it differently? I would have given it a story. A good story. A, an A to B story. I was confused. So, with any bad movie I've ever watched with Danny... <laughs> I get very confused in the middle of the movie. I'm like, where the fuck is this movie going? Yeah. It's like, nowhere. you got to tie A to B. You have to. Yeah. Um, this movie did not do that. And once again, I was lost. <laughs> in the dark. It was, uh, man, there, there was a bit that was uh, a little meandering. And by a little bit, I mean like an hour of it was just. There was at least. 30 minutes, like you said, at least 30 minutes of unnecessary dialogue, unnecessary movie time. Like, like if we were compared to Office Space. Yeah. So uh, Office Space tells a story in the, in the part of the time. An hour and a half. 
Yeah, and it that's the time that it takes to tell that story. That's this, it. The Superman 3, it's like you could tell the story in 40 minutes, but they stretch it into two hours. Because there's characters involved and they want to give yeah. character exposure the entire time. And it's like, again, meh. Again, a lot of the effects, like there's a bit where Clark yeah. Kent's getting like crunched up in a, in a, in a, <sighs> what is that thing? It's like a, a metal trash compactor it's a, a or whatever. a trash compactor, the dump truck. Yard, dump yeah, yard, the, whatever. Yeah, it's like at the salvage yard. He's salvage getting, yard. He's getting, whatever. he's getting smushed. He's and getting man, smushed. And that's a, a fucking, fucking great annoying. look. That's a great looking scene, though. Ah, oh, so infuriating. Like, it looks good, but there's nothing going on. Like, what is it? Oh, it's a, you're having a mental battle with yourself. Uh, I don't know. Let's go ahead and it, rate this, and then let's just bullshit for a while. Okay. W- would you? How many super thumbs out super of ten? Thumbs. Out of ten um, super thumbs. Do we have any more shooters? Super shooters. Who Rider uh-huh. shooters? Who how many? How many uh-huh. super thumbs? Can, can I ask who was the last person to to info <laughs> to dip into these <laughs> to dip into the fridge? Uh, hmm. hmm. Hold on, let me look at the episodes. It wasn't, I, I honestly, it wasn't don't, Birdman. I, I don't. That. I do not care. I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm just curious. I can tell you. <laughs> how super ma- thumbs. How many? How many super thumbs would you give this movie out of super out of ten super thumbs if you had super thumbs? If I had super thumbs as a bad movie, as a bad like, movie, how was your thumbs. how was your enjoyment? Or would you like me to go first because I know sometimes you're like, Mah. yeah, Danny, you always throw me off right. on. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> I'll, I'll let go, me complete I'll my first. I'll go first. Uh, I'm gonna give it a six and a six and three quarter super thumbs. I big big miss on the mark for me as somebody who even likes the Superman lore and the previous two Superman movies. Like this thing is just, it's just fucking all over the place. This is a cash grab attempt that that paid out in the box office but didn't pay out for me. Okay, I'm with you. Not six and three quarters. I'm okay. going to go lower. I'm going to go five and a half. Quarter. Okay. Five, or not quarters. Five. <laughs> well, I guess you could say quarters. I don't know. That's a great of a, anyway, amount of thumbs. Um, Super thumbs. Five and a half. For one thing, half of it is on me. I could give it. I, I could bump it up to six. Half of it is on me. I, I couldn't pay attention. I was like, what is going on? I have no idea. Maybe that's Maybe that's me. Maybe that's me. I'm just going to give it out there. Okay. Okay. The other part is uh, there was zero story to it that I could tell. There, there was a story. It just it was so sparsed out that it uh, it wasn't really. Have you ever had somebody try to tell you a story, but they just can't fucking tell a story? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like you're sitting at a party uh, and somebody's like, hey, man, let me tell you something. And they go to tell you a story, but they can't. They never finish. They can't <laughs> put it together. They just cannot do it. They're physically unable to complete the narrative <laughs> that, that is the Shit. story. They just jump all over the place. That's what this is for me. That is a... But the only reason I gave so, it on, the only reason I gave it the rating I did is mostly because of the effects and a lot of the cinematography I actually thought was quite beautiful. Like I really as far as whoever shot this film, this shows some real promise. Like it actually looks really great. Okay, so the movie looks great. So I like the movie as a general like I'm, I'm gonna fall asleep movie. Oh yeah, I could fall like, asleep through this, like this easily. Easy. Um but the big negative I have on the movie is just Superman. Superman and his powers. Okay. Being. No, wait. Stop. Stop what you're doing. Rate it in thumbs. Wait, did you say five and a half? Um, I said five and a half. Okay. And then, uh, I just wanted to make it official. Five and a half, 6.75. I was going to go six. thumb ratings. Uh-huh. No, 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 no. Let's go I'm gonna bump it to six. You're going to bump it to six. Six Sorry. and 6.75 for Superman 3. Yes. Those are the thumb ratings. Yes. Thumbs, super Carry thumbs. On. I just wanted to make sure that's clear. Super thumbs of six. Super. But a big negative I have on the movie. I, I, yeah. I, I'm doing like a graphic image in, in the air. Um, It's just the powers of Superman were so negated by everything like 
any like the storytelling plot of the movie had to have Superman be a weak person, yeah, or a weak like uh, like he had to be a weak when it. I was like, why yeah. you could break free of this shit, bro? Like, stop. Yeah. You, yeah, you could just fly through the ceiling. It's like, uh, like so they use kryptonite at the very end. It's like, uh, I get you. You're caught in a beam. I got it. But it, I don't know. It, it. That's my my whole issue with Superman was, and still is. He's a god. Like he's yeah. not a human. He's yeah. not a human turned into a god. He's a god that's. What the these fucking humans are weak, and yeah. it's hard to tell a story around that. I'm not a comic person. I'm just no, like, that's the way I see you're, it. You're n- you're not wrong, but if you were a comic person, you would know that the comic literature is like the like the comic book literature makes him more compelling than he's ever been on screen. Yeah, and like ever, there's never been a Superman movie that makes him as interesting as he is in any comic book run that's why i love marvel because they can tell a story around any that's kevin feige that's kevin that's kevin feige kevin feige fucking 101 man that guy just knows how to do it properly fucking dc sucks at at storytelling around have you seen the suicide squad the new one not the new one not not the newest one man it's when we get out of the studio we got james gunn to do it yeah it's james gunn Uh, when we get out of the studio, we're gonna go put it on. You're gonna watch ten minutes of it and go. I'm back in. I'm, Last I'm time back in. Talked? I'm back in. I'm all in on the DC universe. I'm shoving all my chips in, and I think that as a huge Marvel fanboy, I think if they take a note out of James Gunn's book and reboot uh, the, the whole Guardian, universe Guardian using the Galaxy, that, just using use that idea, super. if they're just like, hey, James Gunn and Taika Waititi, you guys want to just. Just fucking make superhero movies. Do you want to? I will. They, we'll pay you. You can just do it. Dude, you got us. Well, here's here's <laughs> the thing with comic book movies is everybody wants to make them serious and they want to like relate them to real life because when you're reading them, they kind of feel like they could be. No, it's it's a, but it's, it's when you a when you take the story and it's a guy in a costume fighting an alien from another planet. Over a fucking a, a mineral, Metal a co- magical mineral that Krypton. doesn't even exist. They're, like, have a little fun with yourself, you know? You know the story, Take silly. it easy. So have a good time, like James Gunn and Taika Waititi. Uh, you can make it, you can give it a certain amount of levity and still keep us in that in that mind frame of this is the movie, this is the story that I'm into, this is where I'm at. I mean, that is exactly what the intro to Guardians of the Galaxy 2 is. Oh my it god, is, it's great. Let's, let's have fun. Oh yeah. You know where you're at. Yeah. It's fucking Chris Prattley in the show, but everything else is going to be fucking hilarious. Yeah. It's going to be fun. It's music to it. It's going to be awesome. Oh my god. And it's a comic. Let's fucking do it. Oh, it's in- it's incredible. So it's kind of interesting how they've evolved that story from comic to to movie so what would you what would you do if you were gonna remake this movie right now today well, let's just assume that you've got henry cavill for your casting okay. as superman uh, so, so what, 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 what else would say you what else I, would you do about this i didn't i don't mind at all christopher reeves i think he's great i think he's probably better than henry cavill oh henry he's cavill fantastic. looks the part of superman but Christopher Reeve looks the part of, of Clark Kent. Clark Kent, and, and he Superman. becomes Superman. <laughs> right? Like, yeah, he, he really he is great. That. Yeah, like, damn man, you... he's he's fucking perfect, man. I I don't know who else you would get for it. Like, man, it's so unfortunate that he was like, yeah, you know, that he had his accident and was uh was was rendered uh, uh immobile. Yeah, immobile, handicapable. However, however you want to slice it. Uh, you know, guy, guy can't walk. It's a fucking major bummer. Also, that he played Superman and that Superman can't walk. It's a against. weird uh, contradiction. Yeah, I just a uh, yeah, it sure is, man. But God, he was perfect at it. He was literally because he was the perfect Clark Kent. He was like anybody could play Superman. Anybody can play Superman. 
Yeah. There's, there's big, only big a, buff there's dude, a just very fucking small, handsome, maybe, you know, whatever. There's a very small handful of motherfuckers out the there that can pull off Clark Kent. They can play the nerd part. Oh, dude. It's like, he, he, he did it. He's he like, was so, damn, bro, you he got was it. so vanilla ice cream and apple pie the whole time. <laughs> you know what I mean? He yeah. was great. He was. Like, so, okay. So, I can't change him. I can't. I, I, I can't. Like he's he's good let's at what he does. Let's assume you're gonna remake it present day, and you've got Henry Cavill because it is present okay. day. Henry Cavill. I feel like you know, Henry Cavill probably could do the nerd part if I feel like he could do it because he is a fucking nerd. If he if if he was pressed to the iron, like you got to do this, he would do it. I think he he would be just fine I, because he is a nerd. Yeah, yeah. That's why I think he'd be fine. Um, uh, I'm also a nerd, by the way. That's so, not a derogatory term. No. I know we throw nerd around, nerd around a lot like, on this show. Yeah. If we're you're out fucking, there, and you, if you're out there and you think you're a nerd, hey, rock on. <laughs> me and fucking Danny, rock on, dude are or lady, on, dude. We're connecting through a microphone brainwaves to you. So, I mean, if we're not nerds, I have no idea who is a nerd. <laughs> I'm nerd as fuck. I DM three different campaigns. <laughs> no, I DM two campaigns. No, the uh, no, I do DM three campaigns. We just haven't played in forever. Um, hold on. Well, what else would I do differently about this movie? Um, I would just make it about one thing. That's would be my biggest yeah. critique of this whole movie. No, is yeah, I would Go just make that, it about one I'm... thing because it's about like eight things, and that's why it's two hours long, and it doesn't need to be. It literally is. It's way like they they just to... took six random issues of Superman <sighs> and went, let's mash all these together and make a movie. Like it could be decent. This movie, it is at least at minimum a half an hour too long, <laughs> like thirty minutes too long. Like what are you doing there? Um, and then like don't downplay Superman's abilities. Give him a stronger character to go against. Like. There was no, like, bad guy that I felt that Superman couldn't just smash immediately right then and there and in the movie in one minute. That That is absolutely that, true. That's the main factor here. Like, Superman is like, all right, I'll kill you. Like, that's not Superman, but he, you know, he gets squashed that shit immediately by uh, hog tying him or something. By the way, hog tying, I've been playing Red Dead Redemption <laughs> Okay, nice. What? Hold on, we're not at that segment yet. That, that's all I've got to say about Superman, though. I'm fucking over it. Over it's, it. I wasn't into it. This isn't something I would watch in a cheeky mood to watch a terrible movie. Uh, yeah. The effects are good yeah, for that, 83. That's pretty much it. There are a couple of things that I want to uh, go over from the from the from the gram. Oh, actually, oh, oh, one second. Yeah. Oh, I thought I had, I thought I had a fart, but. And fart. So. You didn't have to fart. <laughs> okay, so we actually have a. I I post random stuff on our stories from the Instagram, and uh, I got a listener who wrote in and said because I said you know ask me a question about the about the show. Yeah. Uh, how many kielbasa sausages do you think you could fit in your mouth at once? So let me let me repeat it. <laughs> how many how many kielbasa how, how many sausages bosses Sausages. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Did I, did, did I say it wrong? Kill basa. Basa. Mm-hmm. Kill basa. Sausage. Plur- yeah. Like a uh, singular or plur- plural? Yeah, it's a it's a type of sausage. It's like instead of getting a Polish sausage, you would get a kill basa sausage, which actually I think is a type of Polish sausage, but. Well, I'm very confused now. I think I could probably... I, I'm not going to answer that question. You think you could fit one in your mouth? Uh, that's a trick question. Um, hmm. Danny? <laughs> well, I, I don't exactly have an answer for that because I've never seen a kielbasa sausage. I think it's about the size of a large bratwurst. It's like a that's Vienna. the case... Man, maybe one if I can like break it, and if that doesn't count, but I'm going to answer this question uh, on the ground. Is gram. it like a Vienna sausage? No, no. Remember the last time you had a Vienna sausage? Yeah, I love, I love, <laughs> I love weird 
over processed fucking over salted <laughs> meats like Vienna sausages and potted meat and so I, I love that. That's not what a bosses bosses no, sausages kill bosses sausage. Oh. No, kill bosses sausages. It's like, not a Vienna like, sausage. No, it's like an authentic German like a blood sausage mm. or some shit. It's like a like a whole thing. It's like, it's like a. Say so, like a whole thing. That's a big sausage, huh? But what I'm gonna say Can't in hunt. response is maybe one try me, motherfucker. Okay, <laughs> and what else <laughs> we've got here is uh, occasionally at work I get paid to go play golf. So because I am getting paid to play golf, does that make me a professional golfer? Yes or no? Um, from my standpoint, if you're getting paid on the clock. And you're playing golf. To make a professional golfer? You're professional. I'll take it. 100%. 100%. 100% answer. Soldier swipe. Yep. And uh, give a shout out to uh, Beth Saltz. Instead of Bath Saltz. It's a clever username. (laughs) I like it. Beth Saltz, uh, who said that she also also plans on getting out of hand tonight. Holla holla. What's up? Uh yeah, but uh you know hit us up on any of our socials. Uh, like we don't uh, we don't post a whole ton of shit, but we have you know, fun it's, with it. It's, it's fun to have some interactions. Yeah. So we'll go ahead and do the other segment of the show, and it's called uh... what you've been watching. What you watching? Hey, what you watching? So. Jackson, what uh, what you watching, man? You've been checking out anything, reading, uh, jamming, man. You I, know, I, I will tell you this. Can I can I interject? Yeah, please. I have been waiting. Is there any new movies or anything like? like I've been waiting movies? very patiently for a new uh, album to come out by the band Every Time I Die, and I've gotten tired of waiting, so I just started going back and listening to the previous album, Low Teens, and oh my god. Just makes me want to fucking punch my way through. I'm gonna ask you wall. a question at the very end of this. Oh yeah, okay. I don't. I I want to see where because I haven't hadn't because you brought it up and then, anyway. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Re- re- ask the question. Uh, what you watching or <laughs> listening to or reading? <laughs> what what What's media? What media are um, you consuming? I am at the moment. Um, you know. I'm a workaholic. I fucking hate office space because it represents my life. It's like, fuck. <laughs> ah, when can I make more money? Even when you picked this movie, I was like, what a masochist. Yeah, I am. <laughs> fuck. Ah, Danny. You just killed You just killed it. I am a I, masochist. That's what it is. I'm a masochist. I hate my life. You like, you like that ass beating. I, I like getting to work and, you know, like fucking gross, my, dude. my fucking boss just being like, fuck you. It's not you. gross. That's not kink shaming. I just do no, I, whatever you're into, go nuts. But not you, Jackson. <laughs> quit, quit. All right, all right, all right. I'm going to back off. Quit rubbing the dirt in your I'm, own I'm eyes. I'm going to back off a little bit. All right, hon. <sighs> a little bit of a masochist, but. Maybe that's where I find humor. I don't know. I don't know. Fuck it. So I'd All right, say... I, I'm, I'm masochist. I don't know. Okay. Um, have you watched any shows? Shows. Yeah. Um, yeah, I haven't. Um, you haven't? I haven't watched much. Okay. I, it cracks me up because I've been working so fucking hard as an office space person. <laughs> yeah. It's like, uh, I haven't watched that much outside of, uh, you know. Watching Office Space? <laughs> Watching, you know, what I do on a daily. That's fair. What do you, like, what do you no. listen to on your commute? Like, when you, because you, you got a bit of a drive to work. Not, like, not everybody yeah. knows this, but w- what's your drive time? Uh, It's an hour and 15. Hour 15? Yeah, that's not, that's not too bad. It's not bad. I listen to, on the way up, actually, uh, on the way up, I listen to uh, some hardcore music <laughs> to keep me awake. Um, On the way home i listen to joe rogan i don't know that's joe rogan that, that's right the number two podcast that's just underneath us as far as yeah. ratings are concerned he's a little if you've little never heard of the blows. joe rogan experience don't even worry about it it's nothing you hear me rogan it's coming, nothing coming for you yeah yeah boy <laughs> coming nah. for you rogan nah, Actually, I, I look up to him a lot like as a uh i look up to him like because he's taller than me and that's about it is he i don't know i don't think he is <laughs> he's like he, five he, foot seven and he's a half. like five and a half like he's Fucking, five five that's awesome 
He's Joe he, Rogan, you punk bitch. I'm just he kidding. is. <laughs> Don't fight me. Come on my show, though. Like, we can talk about movies. You'd love it, bro. Pick pick an old shitty nah, movie you love. Just like he, I'll watch it and I love it. The reason I bring him out is like uh, he's a uh, he rejects positivity and discipline and all that, and you know, on a personal level, and it's like ah, thank you. It's like uh, being open minded about stuff. Like he's just out there. Oh yeah, no that 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 bit's great. And yeah, I, I actually do like a lot of Joe Rogan's content. His voice for me is like nails on a chalkboard, though. <laughs> it really is. Like, I have a really hard time listening to him. If it were anybody else just saying what he says verbatim. Right. Like, if it were Morgan Freeman, I would love that show. Yeah. I've been, you know, uh, a workaholic. You know, that's what Office Space turned into, is workaholics. You ever seen that fucking show? I have seen a I couple episodes of workaholics. workaholics. I liked it. I'm not sure why I didn't finish it because I did quite like Dude, it. Workaholics is like the 21st century of office space. They're just high. They're high the Ladies entire and time. That's like five beer cans tonight that I have perfectly thrown in the trash can. Five out of five, seven? Five out of seven? 17. At, that's no, not bad. No, I think it's seven. Honestly, I've seen you miss twice. Uh, so you, I did miss twice. If you're twice. saying five, I'm like, all right, you got to miss I've seen twice. That's in this. true. <laughs> uh, so, Work Hogs, great show. I don't know why I brought that up. I, um, I don't know. Is there anything you've been watching recently? Like you can, see, you know, is an appropriate answer. No, I'm trying. If so you haven't watched the one like, thing I've done recently that's not been like I don't know since the last time. I I kind of got bored with shit because there's nothing on TV. It's almost 2022. It's crazy. We were watching Nine, but, Nine Perfect Strangers on Hulu. Pretty good. Oh, I watched uh, since the last time me and you talked. I watched yeah. Tokyo Ghoul. I'm about a season and a half in to Tokyo Ghoul. It, it's only two seasons. I watched. Um, I watched the first season. Uh, all right. Well, let me say this. I'm like 15 episodes in. Uh, I originally watched like the first seven or eight episodes, yeah, and then I kind of lost interest. So then I I, can see I waited like a year, and then I picked it up like three episodes back, and now I'm that far, and I've kind of lost interest again. But I think I'm actually, I think where I'm at in the story is where eventually I was like, okay, I'm done watching this. Like I actually think I've seen up to where I'm at before, right. But I do, I like most of it. I want to like the rest of it, but I just need to like power through like three or four episodes. Mm. Nice. I needed that. Uh, okay, so Tokyo Ghoul. I hadn't watched any of it, but you see it on like trailers of like just random anime. Like, yeah. Oh like, yeah. Like a specific scene. I think it's an okay show. So it's like there's a specific scene where like white hair. And so that's all I'm gonna say. Um, but I watched season one and then into season two, and I'm like, man, season one was about this kid finding his identity in this. Ra- I'm not right without without like season, spoiling anything. Season two is kind of about him just becoming a be- murderous be- monster, becoming becoming who he should be to. Feel his inner de- desire, maybe. A murderous monster. He, well, he's he not a murderous person. He desires to be he, a murderous he, he, monster. He desires to be a protector. Yeah. So, like, the whole season two is like, he wants to distance himself from everybody that he loves so he can protect them. But, at the same time, he's trying to hunt out the bad within the bad by being the bad guy. Right, 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 right. So, I don't know. Anyway, it's it's only two seasons long. I think it's a good uh, good anime. Yeah, I'm pr- I'm pretty far through it. I'm like I want to say I'm maybe halfway through the second season. Yeah, and it's, it's just it, I don't know. It's it's probably getting... twenty episodes. Is I mean that's a, that's it. So it's nice. You're you're through it. Yeah, so right. If you if you want to like start from first to end, it's Maybe two and a half I days. I haven't picked up anything new, but my daughter's rewatching One Punch Man, so I've been watching a little nice. bit of that with her. Oh, God, I fucking love One Punch yeah. Man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, started watching Nine Perfect Strangers on Hulu. That's great. Um, 
let's see here. Was there anything else I got into? Yeah, actually, I started watching a couple of shows. I started watching... In the summer. I started watching Truth Seekers on Amazon. I think I've got one episode left. It's, um... It's okay. It's like cheeky British X-Files, but not quite as good, but it'll kind of scratch that itch. And I also started watching... What was the other one? I started watching a series on HBO. I can't remember what it is, and I didn't write it down. Uh, see, hon, you've been picking up HBO shows? Yeah, yeah. I need you to start watching some stuff, some stuff here, because uh, I got some shows for you. Uh, I haven't... I I canceled my HBO uh, subscription a while ago. Yeah. So, so I haven't... Like, I'm not up to date. Okay, well, uh, what do you got? But lay maybe it, lay year, it on me. Maybe a maybe year and a half or so, but... When the last time I left it, I thought uh, Secession, I think that's the show. That show is awesome. Secession? I think that's... Yeah, I'm drunk. Um, <laughs> uh, Secession, maybe. Secession. On HBO. Uh, maybe. Questionably. Questionably. It is a great show. It has very funny shit on it. It's a power show, kind of. Okay. Um, you, you're not of a uh, Game of Thrones person, right? I like. I'm sure it's fine. I watched the first season of it. I liked it, and then I just kind of stopped watching it. You watched Deadwood. I have watched the first season of Deadwood. Deadwood is an amazing show. It was one of the first to kind of break the barrier of just being a uh, a show that is movie quality, mm -hmm. but also like dirty. Yeah, dirtyish. Like, yeah, it's dirty. Dirty. It'll get dirty sexually, physically. Like, mm -hmm. one of the fight scenes in Deadwood... Environmentally. Well, no, one of the fight scenes in Deadwood is, like, still one of one of them that I look back on. I'm like, damn, that's... I don't want my head punched in like that. Because mm. that felt real. <laughs> so, off of Deadwood, um, I've been playing uh, some... I went back and played Red Dead Redemption 2. Right. Random, random story in Red Dead Redemption too. Uh, I love the first part of Red Dead Redemption. Okay, like the story one was a great story two was even great, and how they tied both of them together was great. Like I love how Rockstar, the Enterprise of uh, like they do GTA, yeah, but they they've done Red Dead Redemption and. Yeah, yeah, one, of course. One yeah, and two. Rockstar games, they, they make some amazing stuff. Like, in 2021, I don't remember when Red Dead Redemption 2 came out. It had to be 2014, 2015 graphics. Because it does not hold up to the graphics of, I don't know, like Destiny or like uh, anything today. Like, right. the graphics don't hold up. But the, the story is it's congruent. It, it, it makes sense. It ties together, and it's open world, open world kind of play type of stuff. Oh yeah, for sure. You know, like I don't want to like get real. Like if I if I get off work and I'm like I right, I don't want to do something where I have to use my brain to be very good at it. I just want to, um, you know, I just want to like play something, and I want to ride a fucking horse. That takes no effort. Well, uh, one thing I do actually want to um, give out a shout out to is um, I was listening to an episode of Stuff to Blow Your Mind today, actually. Uh, it's an archived episode about sea turtles. They have a guest on there. Her name is uh, Dr. Christine Figner. Uh, Figner? Figner. I think it's Dr. Christine Figner. Uh, anyway, she, she's a marine biologist and a specialist with sea turtles. Uh, she's at Sea Turtle Biologist on Instagram. And uh, she gave an amazing talk on that that I actually thought was really, really fucking interesting. And uh, I hit her up on the, on the gram and left a comment on one of her pictures and was like, hey, I enjoyed your talk on this show. She like gram. immediately replied and was like, oh, oh yeah, yeah, no, yeah, it was like like within five minutes. She She's was like, awesome. oh, thanks, oh, I'm glad you blah, 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 I'm glad you liked it, it was a fun show to do, and yada, 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 yada. And uh, yeah, no, it was, it was great. Uh, I thought it was a really interesting talk. It was a lot of stuff about sea turtles I had never even considered. 
Like when somebody's like, hey, you want to hear a fun fact about an animal? And you're like, like Jesus, that yes. fucking makes sense. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> uh, but like sea turtles, uh, she's the lady that's infamous from pulling out the, the lady that pulled the straw out of the sea turtle's nose. That's her oh. video. Oh, ah. Yeah. Well, ah. she's an actual marine biologist. And um, she did that. Yeah. Yeah. That's her. Oh, you're a crazy girl. And, um, but, uh, anyway, she, she talks about like sea turtles being like, that's why you can't put them under and operate on them is because they're ectotherms and they're like I mean, anesthesia is like live in almost de like deadly to them. Uh, they have these fucking amazing healing factors and their mating rituals. And it's just, it's wild, man. Listening about real animals that seems like science fiction is fucking awesome. I mean, anything in the sea is like anything that we are that would go to space and like yeah. an alien like what is this oh yeah <laughs> and so uh, that's uh, it has amazing healing factors yeah. down in earth <laughs> that's an that's a, another podcast called um uh stuff to blow your mind by how stuff works and uh it's, it's a great show it's no, like one I, of my favorite shows but like some of them some of their episodes i'm like man i have to share this with somebody they have an episode about tomatoes it's fucking ridiculously fascinating so, about tomatoes so go, so going back to the turtles okay i saw a video today i was beyond confused i saw turtles running have you ever seen turtles running yeah i thought they walked like seriously slow the entire time no man i saw them jogging and i was like pissed off about the turtle and the rabbit shit and i don't know it blew my mind <laughs> Um. Yeah. No. They 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 can be huh? pretty quick and feisty when they want to. Uh, they they were there was like a group of them running. Oh yeah. I was so confused. I was like, I thought they only could like bar barely walk. No. Nah. Like slow as a turtle, but like the rabbit. I don't know. Oh no. They they can get I got it, bro. Seriously confused. They're just, when they're, I just saw uh, it. they're just exotherms. They they don't produce their own heat except leatherback sea turtles when they eat stuff when it goes into their stomach their stomach produces more heat than it intakes so that's what allows them to stand or what you know that all sea turtles have lungs so they have to breathe air all of them you know all sea turtles that you've ever seen ever all have to breathe air that's fucking crazy i like at a certain point i just didn't consider it anymore i was like yeah some of them whatever they don't whatever it's you, fine. You know, like, we own 25% or whatever of the earth. We think we own... Like, uh, all, like all land. The, yeah. Right? Yeah. Squids, they're the real masters. Squids are? Yeah. They're aliens. Cephalopods? Shit. Yeah. Could happen. You're they're, hearing it You're hearing it here first, folks. And squids also from, and dolphins. Also from H.P. Lovecraft and... Tons of other people. Squids and dolphins. They're Squids your and new dolphins masters. actually rule the world. I I don't know how. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, so just, they own 75% of the earth. Just do War of the Worlds and be like, the squids and the dolphins have taken over the beach. <laughs> <laughs> taken over the beach. And, uh, <laughs> you know how terrified you'd be if you were just like this chilling in the ocean? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I would be super terrified just chilling in the ocean. I would be. That ain't no shit. The okay, ocean's hold on, hold on. scary hold, as fuck. Hold on, hold on. I, I've seen River Monsters. So, so let me say. Hey, no, it's not River, River Monsters. Dude, but River, River Monsters, Monsters with Jeremy Wade, probably favorite. Me is, and you, <clears throat> River Monsters are the equilibrium yeah. of me and Danny. Yeah, I think I think that's it. I think that's our biggest that's our us. biggest thing that we have that's in common us. is the fact that That's that, that's our connection. We, like, mm. we would immediately mm. we would immediately Leave, cool leave the, I would leave the country at the top of a, at the drop of a hat. If somebody's like, "Hey, you want to go do a show? You want to go catch a world record fish in a dangerous part of the world and in do you fucking speak, crazy circumstances? Do you want to like investigate with Portuguese accent? Yes. Hi, I'm Daniel <laughs> King. And oh my gosh, the hunt. beaches of Egypt. So there's some crazy African fish. Do you remember those episodes? I could, uh, yeah, that's most of them. Those teeth are like, talking about the tiger fish. Like yeah, like six inch. Like the, well, there's the the you regular tiger, the Goliath tiger. Yeah, You're talking the, about the Goliath tiger the, fish. The Goliath is like a, yeah, yeah. There's dinosaurs today. 
Like a crocodile is a dinosaur. Nobody can dispute that. A crocodile is a dinosaur. No one is going to say, no, you're wrong. No, it's not. They just got a little smaller. <laughs> okay. It's the they're same, dumb it's as the shit, same but fucking thing. They have the evolutionary by whatever. They're, they're a dinosaur. They lived. Sorry. And uh, birds. It turns out they're not government drones. They're dinosaurs. Pigeons? Yeah. Dinosaurs. Okay, yeah. Um, Ah, shit. Where's it going? Uh, I don't know. You're we're, saying... We're you, turtles and you're stuff? you about dinosaurs. Oh, no. We we're talking about something. No, you were going for dinosaurs. Damn it. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, we we're just talking about something. Um, right before that. Uh, what were we talking about? We we're talking about birds or fishes. We were talking about... Uh... Uh, river monsters? River monsters. Uh, okay. The Goliath African tiger fish? Goliath fish. That is straight out of a horror movie. Look it up. Goliath Tigerfish? Exactly. Dude, she's, what a, Dan na- just said. she's a nasty motherfucker. That thing, if you were to picture in your nightmares the scariest quote unquote fish, that thing isn't a fish. But I'm just saying, if you're like, all right, scariest fish possible has great gigantic teeth. That's an African predatory freshwater fish. You would picture this fucking fish. It is nightmare fuel. It would fuel. kill you. Yeah. <laughs> it ab- it absolutely is nightmare fuel. Like, one of these could consume you as a person. It's a dinosaur fish. It is a dinosaur fish. It has crocodile teeth, but it's a fish. So that's and, where uh, we were going with that story. I don't know how yeah. we got there, but that's, you know, well, Jeremy when Way. I, when I edit it, it will appear to be one clear cognitive strain of thought. Have we ever t- discussed me and you... Walk in the crick. <laughs> uh, Walk in the crick. Well, I didn't know if that was appropriate for radio. You guys aren't going to start sucking each other's dicks, are you? Let's all that ball talk! We're a one-eyed fat man! Can I make a suggestion that doesn't involve violence? Or is this the wrong crowd? Maybe we should call in a bomb threat to Houston. I think it's free beer night at the Astrodome. The Jedi. Bob, we don't fight with guns. We fight with the mind. Guys in business is a boomer. That is one big pile of shit. Jail gone. It's Just Two Movies is a production of Blue Cheese and Bacon Studios and can be found wherever you get your podcasts. All right. I am interested in the story, but we got to start this show. Well, I joined the clan. I didn't join the clan. You joined the clan? But I, I, I was going to cut this into the episode. I can't <laughs> put that in there. I know, that's why I said it now. I didn't join the clan, but I like walked into a clan meeting. Yeah? Were they like, <laughs> oh, you're good, man? They're all, I, was like, I was like, what the fuck am I? I'm in the middle of woods. Like, what is going on here? Like, and they're all like torches and, and like the white Freedom of assembly. Did this like, really happen? And I was like... I even took a picture on my phone to send it to Can my group. Can I gr- see it? To my group. Yeah, that's what I was trying to <laughs> Dude, so, all right, hold on, stop. You accidentally wandered into a clan meeting? In Red Dead Redemption, yeah. Oh, in Red Dead Redemption. <laughs> okay, this is less funny now. I was like, Jesus Christ, man.